the increased in neurodegenerative disease, and the case for organic solvents is less clear. So in people for whom they either have fairly severe peripheral neuropathy or there's some issue of cognitive dysfunction, we can measure uh, pesticide levels in the blood and uh, treat appropriately. Next. Uh, other industrial pollutants, bisphenol A is a plasticizer and it's, uh, uh, its concentration is associated with a variety of medical disorders in adults, and this comes from major medical literature, it's not from some uh, throwaway journal, etc. There was a significant relationship between urinary bisphenol A and cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and liver enzyme abnormality. This is a product that's found everywhere. Uh, in every, they're making less of it now. They're, they're, they're reducing the production, of the use of it in the production of plastic bottles, etc. Uh, next. Uh, vinyl toluene is a less volatile homologue of styrene, a neurotoxic chemical, and there are changes that are measurable. Next. And then the biotoxins that could come as an example from Lyme or mold exposures, um, et cetera, or products that are, let's say, undesirable, produced by our own body and normative metabolism. Next. And the testing is a, the heavy metal challenge test we do. We can do blood analysis for chlorinated pesticides, PCBs, and volatile organic compounds. And we can do a, a urinalysis for toxin, toxic pollutants and a visual contrast sensitivity test, to, which infers uh, uh, toxic mm -hmm. products in the body. Next. Hormonal imbalances. Uh, abnormal thyroid hormones are associated with an increased risk of dementia in women but not men. But there's no clear value to replacement therapy in people with normal thyroid blood levels. The question is what's normal and that's open to interpretation. And uh, uh, we do, we, and the idea of what's normal is changing. Next. DHEA is a neurosteroid uh, and it's made in the brain itself. It's also made in the adrenal gland and the ovaries and it declines with aging and there's it's not absolutely clear that uh, it, it's not one of these products where there's a a simplistic uh, relationship between supplementation and global and, and a particular health improvement but if the very levels are very low I supplement because there is some evidence that it helps maintain muscle mass reduce body fat and maintain bone density. Next. Um, the interesting thing about DHEA and pregnenolone is that it's actually made independently in the brain and that the decline of the levels are associated with neuronal dysfunction and degeneration and because they basically protect the central nervous system against other toxic chemicals. Next. And so they've done these studies in animals, and the, you know, the dose that I generally would recommend is 25 to 50 milligrams a day. Next. Pregnenolone, likewise, is a pro-hormone. We make it, and then it's transformed to other hormones. But in moderate doses, I think it's quite safe, and, and it, it, I think it is a valuable component of an overall program. It's not an expensive product, so I you know, I do use it. Next. So, you know, I've talked about this before. There's a decline in the neurosteroid levels, and, you know, the problem has to do, I think, to some degree with, well, how would you optimally replace it? Next. Uh, androgen in men can be very valuable. We, I think it's that in vulnerable men whose levels are low, replacement really seems to uh, help improve vascular health and hence, I think, brain function. Next. Um, and there is a relationship between t a decline in androgens and Alzheimer's disease in men. Next. Estrogens, you know, the tricky issues with estrogens goes on and on. There's new recommendations now saying, yeah, we should maybe offer this to women who are symptomatic. 
when they first have their menopause for anywhere between three and five years, and they keep trying to parse the literature and understand it. And uh, I've been happy to have found a product called, uh, from uh, Siberian rhubarb that's sold in this country as Estrovera, which does stimulate the estrogen beta receptor and seems to be quite effective and I think do much of what estrogens would do, but I believe is safer. Next. Um, we all know this. Next. Uh, so the you know, non-feminizing estrogens can be very valuable, and, and, and that would be like the S-triol, which is the estrogen you make the most of when you're pregnant, because it, it doesn't feminize the fetus too much. I mean, in the wisdom of the body, that, I mean, that's one observation. Next. And it does seem to protect the brain from, you know, these insults. But, you know, the frustration is when you give women over age 60 these products, it doesn't, they still get, they get Alzheimer's or they get it as much or more. So it's pretty, pretty frustrating. Uh, next. And we talked, I talked a little bit about the s -triol. Next. And, we, and then I've talked in the past about transcranial brain stimulation. And I actually finally found products and I put it in my briefcase but forgot to take it out with me just now. It, there's a thing called Alpha Stim. You can look it up on the internet. It's used for anxiety and stress relief. It, it does the same thing as the list cranial stimulator and, it, and I believe it will raise uh, brain levels of these protective hormones. It's 500 bucks, so it's not inexpensive, but uh, it is now at least one um, product that is available. Next. And th these products do increase these, these brain uh, hormones and neurotransmitters that, that I think, and I do believe it's quite desirable to do. Next. Um, so the transcranial direct current electrical stem, and there's the transcranial magnetic stem. All these are evolving technologies. They're available, but they're ridiculously expensive. Ex I mean, so they range from being very expensive to less expensive. Uh, and I keep trying to figure out how to get make these technologies available in a less expensive format. But it's it's been tough. Next. <coughs> So anyhow, you can buy these gadgets, the, the ones that have, uh, that are being treated, but they're, like a course of therapy would be $2,500 for 10 treatments. Uh, and my own feeling is it's, it's not covered by insurance, and so I, I'm holding off, certainly. Yes, next. And the, the frustration is they control, they make you pay for every time you treat a patient. So they control, not only do you have to pay 80 grand to buy the equipment, but then you have to pay them 120, you know, 125 to 150 dollars every time you treat the patient. They control every treatment. So it's, it's, it's a model.